and with a, a little bit of uh, effort you can uh, implement the collector very easily oh excellent Santiago well thank you Santiago and now I give the floor to Sandra our master of ceremonies to present the next speaker now Hugo Salgado we invite Hugo Salgado who works in R&D in Nick Chile, and he's going to give his presentation remotely, and he's going to use, uh, speak of the use of DNA, uh, DNAME for um, transferred into rear res resources, uh, reverse resources. So I'm um, uh, Hugo Salgado of um, um, Nick CL, and I thank uh, LACNIC for inviting me to participate in the forum to show a proposal that we developed on a mechanism that would enable us to improve the current process performed by RIRs. The idea of this study was to evaluate how feasible it would be, and we consider that the results are quite well put together. And we see that it's, it has a promising future. However, it depends on the RIRs and the communities whether this will uh, be finally implemented or not. The title is quite complex, so I'm going to break it down little by little to discuss what uh, we are talking about with each of these terms. So. What are I RIRs? Well, you are experts, so we don't uh, won't devote too much time. Those are the internet res regional internet uh, re regional resources. LACNIC is one of the five. Uh, it registers and gives uh, the authorization for using IPv6 numbers, the ASNs, and also the IPv4 numbers, if any, are left. In the internet, there are five RIRs. In addition to LACNIC, we have AFRINIC for Africa, APNIC, Asia Pacific, Europe, RIPE, and ARIN for North America, the United States, Canada, and maybe some regions in the, the Caribbean. What are the interior transferred resources? Well, as I said, an organization you typically uh, registers a resource in the uh, geographic zone where they will operate. However, there's a mechanism for transferring certain sub assignments of resources to another organization. And this organization might be willing to register it in another region. So for instance, an IPv4 or a piece of an IPv4 address that is originally registered in LACNIC, somebody might be uh, willing to yield it and uh, to transfer it to a RIPE. Uh, so this is a mechanism. Well, each RIR has its own rules of how to operate in these transfers. and. It's becoming increasingly common because of uh, the deletion, depletion of uh, IPv4. There are fewer and fewer. They are depleted. So this is what happens. There are many uh, agencies that uh, yield uh, one and can uh, re register in, in other RIRs. Here, I don't want to speak of policies, or but in the in the end, uh, the transfers do occur, and this is the mechanism that works. So going back, what are the reverses of the RIR resources? Well, as I said, in the RIR, I can register an IPv4 address, and it has reverses. What is a reverse? In the world of DNS, originally and historically, the most common use of the DNS is to transfer or to translate names of machines to IP addresses. It's a classical use of the DNS. However, it also exists uh, in reverse. Um, so in order to do this, we have to define a tree, a DNS tree hanging 
under each segment under the RIR that registered that resource. So, for instance, we have that there's a tree under uh, ARPA, uh, in Adder ARPA for uh, the IPv4 and IP6 ARPA for uh, IPv6, and you use the PTR type registries. That's the final name that you will have. For instance, I have a resource that is 325.7.200, and I have to create, uh, I have 200.7.25.3, and when you translate it, you put it the other way around, 325.7.200 in Adder ARPA, and then the PTR. For recapping, the DNS usually has the IP number, but you can also do reverse from IP to name using that technique. Now, what happens when there is a transfer inter rares between different RIRs? There, the reverse needs to be registered under a completely different tree because, as I said, in this case, the example of the 200, it depends on um, LACNIC. And let's assume that the slash 24, we moved it at RIPE, and I have to re-delegate uh, to a new tree. So there you have the example. And this is the current mechanism of how this happens, and this is what we are proposing. We are proposing a change of something that is much more simple, and it has several advantages that I'm going to detail later, but it's quite simple. So this refers to what happens when you transfer a resource from one RIR to another. And this will happen more and more. How do you solve this at present? There's a mechanism that are the zonelets. They were invented by the RIRs to solve this problem. What they do is they share between the five uh, RIRs little pieces of zone. Those are text files that have uh, pieces in the real area and gives instruction of what needs to be published by the previous in, uh, RIR, the one that lost the resource. So here, if, as I said, in the case of the example, if we have two, um, 2725 that it was in LACNIC and now it's going to APNIC, now APNIC, that is the new owner of the resource, will say with a piece, with a zonelet, what LACNIC should put in its subtree of the 200 in Adder ARPA. LACNIC takes that a uh, little bit and forms a complete zone with all those pieces. Quite um, ingenuous um, solution. It works and it has some problems that we'll see later on. What's the problem with the zonelets? Well, the first thing is that a solution outside the DNS, it's an ad hoc solution. So it has certain details that require specialized software and systems that you have to operate to maintain. And it's not an instantaneous process because these zonelets are processed by the RIRs with a certain regularity. And I don't have more detailed information, but I think it's once a day or twice a day. And what happens is that there are some delays that are longer than you would typically expect if the process were purely in the DNS. And finally, it is subject to errors, software errors, bugs. And unfortunately, there have been problems. I think it was in early 2017, five years ago, there was a problem at RIPE, so, and there were bugs for uh, uh, slash eight. So those problems were solved and the people at the RIRs get coordinated and update their systems, but it's always subject to problems like this. And as a matter of fact, it was because of that problem that they thought of this idea of what would happen if instead of using zonelets, we would use uh, another technique, the D-name technique. That's what I'm explaining here. 
So the using DNA is a technique that happens inside the DNS. It's a registry that you can put in your zone and that works. The D name has existed since 1999, 23 years ago. Initially, it had some details, so uh, and it was they updated the standards in 2012, and ever since it's worked um, with no problems. The, it's the D name is used for several things, including, for instance, when a CCTLD or a NIC of a country registers a IDN TLD that they have characteristics that are not the normal. So what very often what the D, uh, TLD wants to do is a mirror and wants to replicate all the registers in the new one. And the, DN, the D name is used for that purpose. There are many countries that have been using it for many years and they haven't reported major problems. So that would be the idea. When there's an inter-rear transfer, the the one that's yielding the resources, what it puts in the reverse zone, is a D-name registry in the delegation point, and that D-name is very similar to the C-name. That's quite common. I don't know whether you know it. That allows you to have AKS. So this delegation now is, it says, this delegation now is in a different subtree. It no longer depends on me. You have to ask. It's like forwarding this request or a C name of the DNS. And so the new RIR now has to maintain a new uh, tree where to receive these transfers. And the good thing is that they can use their own rules. So in the end, we have the new owner of the resource. We'll connect to the normal RIR and we'll make the DNS uh, changes or registers new names. And this will be absolutely transparent and in the DNS. An important thing of that third point is that the new owner of the resource must make a small change in the zone where they will register their reverse, because in the past it depended of the inadder.arpa, but now it has to be registered in the new subtree. So, from now and then afterwards in another slide, there's a graph with, with a chart that is much more clear and everything here has been theoretical, so please, but in the next ones, you have a clearer idea. Here we have an example of a normal delegation. In this case, continuing with the example, um, the uh, 325 that is, for instance, you have we have it registered for a company, and this is under in Ayana, and this is a normal delegation, like the one that's operating now. What we propose is to create a new space hanging from the same IDR, uh, dot ARPA, and e each one will belong to a different uh, RIR. For instance, the green one would correspond to RIPE, and it would be under RIPE's control. So we have <coughs> the current LACNIC space and RIPE's. So we are showing what will happen when there is a resource of this transfer to an organization that will register it in another RIR. And what happens is the following. The first thing is like, the only thing LACNIC m must do is in the point of delegation to write a D name uh, r registry that will uh, forward to the new subtree. This space, as I said, is a normal delegation of the DNS, and there RIPE will put a copy of what uh, LACNIC used to have and there at the bottom, they will have the new slash uh, 24, the 20, this uh, 25. And this organization puts together their zone, and they put the PTR registries that they are interested in having the reverse. So the important thing is that LACNIC here only has to put the uh, uh, registry, and then they forget. And then it's the DNS resolvers that understand that forwarding and will go and send the query to their other subtree. And RIPE 
has to, in their own space, they have to uh, put together the internal subdelegation. And an important change is that the new organization, in this case, uh, Exemple Société, a French uh, organization, they have to register. They're under um, uh, RIP 207.25. And as they are the new signatories, they didn't have a previous zone, so they are creating a new one. And that new one, you need to be careful that it hang of the subtree of transfers of RIP. What are the improvements of the D name? Uh, system. I copied this from the study that we used. It's a simpler solution using DNS standards that are well known and proven and that work. No longer to depend of ad hoc solutions that uh, may be subject to other types of failures and move to a solution within DNS to have a better control on the authoritative um, of the end consumer, so uh, the, they can do it with the RIR that they have service with. And finally, those changes get spread, uh, they propagate instantaneously. Well, of course, subject to the DTL and the CACHE, but in the end, this it's much easier to adjust it to what the organization needs and no longer to depend on batch uh, procedures that may have delays. And the changes of the current system, that's what I showed with the previous graph, is that all of the RIRs should agree on this change in a coordinated manner. Well, in theory, the zone letter and the D name could operate at the same time, but I think that, well, this is a small test and then a complete change. You will have to define the new space of uh, addresses. I, uh, I propose that this should be hanging from in adder. It could say anything. Of dot, it could hang off uh, .net or .lac or however you want to do it. But I think that this solution is quite simple because it only adds a small prefix, a tag, in the prefix of the zone and should be coordinated with IANA. And finally, the holders that transfer resources to other RIRs should be careful and follow the tutorials to follow the proper procedures for creating this new zone with an extra prefix at the end. So that's all. Here there's more information and you have the article that was published by LACNIC explaining this in further detail. And you have the complete report. There were several tests. This issue of the D name uh, mechanism had been discussed for a long time, but we needed more serious studies. And we believe that this is our contribution. Of course, this was tested on open resolvers and in the open source resolvers. It was also done in uh, RIPE Atlas probes, and the results are very promising. We have like 1.1% uh, failures or flaws that we consider is within normal ranges, because you know that in the world of resolvers, there are many strange things happening. So there are some problems that might have to be solved and, uh, and doing upgrades. And, uh, and also, the idea of this study is to present it to the RIRs, LACNIC, and the community. And if from now on the community thinks that this is worth doing or the RIRs, the idea would be to conduct uh, more and more advanced pilots. Um, so we believe that it's worth it. It has more advantages than disadvantages, and we believe that it should be an imp a change to improve the internet and the state of use of the resources. Another important thing is that all this study was done externally. 
I don't know how this works here in detail. I don't know how the sonlets work. I've seen presentations and I know I understand how it commands. Now there may be some variables or factors that are not in the study, and it is there that the uh, RIRs that you may have pilot zones and that get delegated and I would especially like to test it with mail because you know that mail dispatches are um, the ones that use more IP reverses so I'd like to uh, make tests with uh, there to detect how t to what extent the resolution operates well using DNAME. So that's all. Now I'll be available for any question or comment. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. There we see you on the large screen. Can you hear us? He's muted. Wait a second, we can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, perfect, good. Well, thank you for the presentation. That was very interesting. And uh, let me see whether we have any questions in the room. To your left, Carlos, there's a question there. Yes, go ahead, identify yourself. Good afternoon. I have a question, I'm Caballero. It's not working. It's not working now? Now, yes. Good afternoon, Alberto Andero. When you register in LACNIC's page, the reverse DNS, it asks me for the name of the server. In a normal DNS, uh, the ones that we typically traditionally use, usually in the case of Colombia, the provider says, OK, that's the uh, DNS server and gives us the IP. In the reverse DNS, it asks me for a name. Are there servers, are there public servers that we need to implement? How does it work? Because in my case, I don't know much about it. Hugo, do you want to answer? Or, Well, Carlos, yes, please, because this has more to do with uh, the way the RIR operates. What happens is what your ISP tells you to is the recursive DNS, and for that you need an IP address. When you delegate a DNS zone, what you're doing is configuring an authoritative resolution where you will load registries that have the information of the names that you want to appear on the internet, and that is only done through names. The DNS register cannot be used with IP, with cannot be, yes, with IP addresses, but with a name. That name needs to be associated with an IP address through a, for a uh, registry. That's why we ask for the name. The second part, yes, you have to implement a server. There must be more, but I know only one uh, service free of charge that is uh, the DNS of uh, Huron Electric that gives DNS service to up to 50 zones free of charge, so you could use those. But in the end, yes, you have to implement the DNS. Okay. Were you going to ask anything, Ricardo? Ricardo Patara. Hello, Hugo. It's a pleasure to greet you. Yes. I have some concerns, but let me mention two points. One is a comment and the other is a doubt. The comment is that in one of the, your slides, you mentioned that the mechanism used today to build the zone using the zonelets does not follow the DNS protocol. Now, I'd like to make a comment from my point of view. The form you use the zonelet is to build a file. That file is then loaded into a DNS server, and the information is published using the DNS protocol. The zonelets are used only to create the file, and the creation of the file, you can use it, you can download it from a site, or you can uh, uh, test uh, to create a file, 
I don't fully agree with your comment comment that the zone led that you don't use the DNS protocol because what you're doing with the sonelet is a mechanism to build the file and then it is published. And the question is as follows. If you think that the fact that there is a re uh, um, uh, forwarding of uh, the query could uh, increase the time of resolution. Thank you, Ricardo. Yes. Of course, I tried to clarify it in my presentation. What I mean is that uh, it's a mechanism that enables you to take pieces, and finally, it's published in a normal DNS uh, zone. One of the participants of the five RIRs needs to finally be the authoritative of the piece that uh, they are in charge of. So what I mean is that that procedure that implies uh, putting together zona uh, pieces, that's the one we could do without with a new mechanism. With a D name, it's only the uh, RIR that yields the resource may do that and forget about the that resource. And now it's the new RIR that is interested in publishing the resource. It's the one that has that is responsible from then on to change the TLs or the DNS or etc. But you are absolutely right. In the end, the zonelets are also published like a normal DNS zone. Now, of course, in the study that is published there, you have the link, we analyze to how much you increase the resolution because there's an extra change that implies redirecting. I am confident that the DNS is robust enough in catch it that this will happen only once for each name and then everything is kept in the cache registry, the same as the DNSSEC. Uh, and this is a question that they included in the chat. The DNSSEC registries, but, um, the logs, you can, in the D name, you can put your own signature and in the new tree. So the DNSSEC registries can be maintained in both places so that everything will be safe. But I, I invite you to look in further detail the extra time. Unfortunately, I don't have the details, but I consider that it is within normal. Thank you, Hugo. So you already answered your uh, the online question because you saw it in the chat. Yes. Thank you, Hugo. Okay, so now I give back the uh, um, the 